What is going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. Guess who we have here back? What's going on guys? Back again <laughs> we, from the dead. <laughs> we got the man himself, Brian. He's back in here. No mini truck uh, still. He's been hiding that thing uh, from the channel now for a little bit, but we got the Subi back in here and we got quite a bit of parts to update to it today. Brian, run us down through what we're gonna be doing. Uh, we got some new headlights, brand new coilovers, and some front end links, and the, the markers are replaced, the reflective markers, they're replaced with the LED lights. At, yeah, at, we'll show you guys here. They're kind of like on the bumper. It'll remove them and there will be LED brake lights, so they'll be on whenever you have the uh, auxiliary lights on. Mm -hmm. and yeah, then, whenever you turn your lights on and whenever you brake, they should also uh, brake with the tail lights above. So correct. we're going to be lifting the car today, get it up in the air, so that way we don't have to do that later. And I think we're going to start tackling kind of the easy stuff first. So we're going to go with the headlights, replace those, and then get the wheels off and start working on the suspension and then move on to the rear and do the lights, I think. At least that's what the attack plan is right now. So it could change. We'll see how it is once we start working on it. As you can tell, Brian's headlights have been in bad need of replacement now for a while. This one is the good one, but just recently, I think someone backed up into his car. So they cracked it. I mean, it was already in bad shape, but somebody backed up into my car, either where I live at or at work and cracked my headlight. And well, we're gonna replace them anyway, so. Yep, and y'all remember we did the little bumper hole in here? Yeah, that rubber band freaking flew somewhere. The, no, it was from the accident. Oh, it was from the accident? Yeah, yeah it was okay. when somebody backed up into my car and I noticed when I got to the gym, I'm like, where's my, my bumper hanging off? I noticed the, the, I guess the rubber band piece that goes around it was missing. Then I noticed my headlight was cracked and then my bumper was scuffed. I'm like, great. If it ain't one thing, it's another. <laughs> Alright guys, so since we are going to replace the headlights, we have to remove the front bumper first and to do that... In my case, since I have quick releases on my front bumper, it's just on this side and on the driver's side and then there's four um, plastic screws Yeah. and you just release, you remove them and that's it. But if you do not have a quick release, you will have some tabs in here that you need to remove and then two screws on the, on the, on the passenger side and the driver's side and you're right. good to go. And then once you get all of those out, you should be able to remove your bumper. And then to remove the headlights, we do have about five screws, I believe. So there's going to mm -hmm. be two on the top. And there's going to be one on the side, one on the bottom, and then one on the inner part of the headlight. All right, guys. So we have removed the headlights and scratched everything. We said there's definitely way more bolts in there. I think there was uh, three on the bottom. Uh, two on the side. Two on each side, actually. Two on each side, two on the top. So the bottom one, there's one that's kind of facing towards the inside of the car. So just be on the lookout for that one. Brian's headlights have been pretty messed up. So uh, we don't know if some of these bolts might have been added on. I mean, just like I said, keep that in mind. You do have to remove these little plastic bottom tabs on the bottom of the headlight. They kind of our guides for the bumper and I'm not sure if the bumper actually hooks into them I think it does so keep that in mind as well don't just trash your headlights swap that piece into the new headlights because we're gonna need it uh, but yeah here's the old ones here's the redness that Brian had he had some HIDs in here but he also has some troubles with them so he uh, they kind of get a rig here I guess the controller for the HIDs messed up or something and yeah it's just a mess please don't be like me look at this now look at me. Now look at this. <laughs> <laughs> um, everything's out. So we are now ready to bring the new headlights in here. Uh, what kind of headlights are the new ones, Brian? Uh, they are the Spec D headlights, the uh, halogen uh, style. So check out, we got the new headlight here. Shoo! That thing's gonna look good plug and play as far as we know so uh we are going to test that out though before we start putting everything back together but i mean they're going to look good we got the drls a nice new projector non-foggy non-sun crack not anything so i think it's going to look good all right my guys and like every other shit box video we've done something always doesn't go right so this should have been 
pretty much a plug and play uh, situation here with the headlights. You take out your old ones, you come in and plug your new ones into this plug and everything's supposed to run pretty smoothly from there. Bolt everything back up and you're good. But again, this car is all in. Before Brian had an issue where his driver's side headlight wasn't, wasn't coming on for some reason. We thought it was maybe the bulb. We swapped out the bulb, it didn't work. He, they did this kind of ghetto rig thing with the lights and then his passenger side is the one that didn't come on. So now that we plugged everything where it's supposed to be, I think what we're finding out is how we did a little voltmeter test here. His low beams on the driver's side are not getting any power. So I'm not sure if it's, we checked the fuses, the fuse is fine. Um, we're not sure if it's maybe the plug itself here. Maybe the wiring got fried at some point. I'm hoping there's a relay somewhere in here. We haven't taken the time to look for a relay yet, but we're hoping maybe the relay is messed up and we can just quickly swap the relay and have these lights working. We tested out the other side. It works fine, works perfect. Everything comes on. Uh, so this side is the only one that's giving us problem. And again, it's just the low beam. So unfortunately, because we want to, I guess, get a little bit going with this project, we are gonna put this one for a little bit later in the video and we are gonna uh, switch gears now and go into switching the coilovers, which we have over there. Um, so we're gonna start taking this off and then move to the rear so we can do the rear ones. And then we'll do the little lights here on the side. Those shouldn't be a big problem. It's gonna be just ground running lights and brake lights. And then we're gonna come back to doing the front lights. Uh, Brian says he thinks he jinxed himself because he says there's always something that comes up and he might be right. <laughs> So check it out guys. So these are the coilovers that we're gonna put on Brian's WRX. They're called Rev9 uh, Hyper Street 2. Uh, they basically look like tines or tains. Definitely not saying that right, but uh, like those tines uh, uh, coilovers, they have the kind of same green going on and they look pretty good. I mean, just on a quick overview on it, they look pretty good. The quality on it looks decent from what we can tell. So we, we won't know until we put them on. Uh, something that was nice about it though is that the spring uh, preload is already set from factory according to the stickers so we don't have to touch anything with this you don't have to adjust it or modify it in any way we're only going to adjust the bottom part so we can get the right height that he wants uh, and we're going to try to match it to what he has on there right now he has we can get in here some d2s are they d2s brian uh yeah 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 d2s uh, so we're going to try to match the same height he doesn't want to go any lower uh, but he doesn't want to sit any higher either. So we are going to start here with the rear, which should be pretty easy. We have basically one bolt here on the bottom, and then we should have two on the top, which Brian right now is working on getting this thing off. We have to take this plastic yeah. so we can get to it. Alright guys, so it turns out you don't need to remove all this plastic. We actually can get to them just by removing the bottom part here. Uh, there is a 14 millimeter bolt on this side and a 14 millimeter, sorry, uh, nut, not bolt. There's 14 millimeter there. And then if we move to the bottom over here, all you need is a 17 millimeter for that one. Uh, both a socket and a wrench and you can remove that. Yeah, we removed the ball here. We're gonna remove the ones on the top and we should really just take this whole thing out. So here we have the D2 ones. These are the ones from the passenger side. We just took it out. So pro tip here, you will need most likely a little, little bit of weight on this to push it down to be able to get the bolts from the top out and the bottom one should come off fairly easy. Um, so once you get that out, I mean, look at the condition of these things. They are looking a little rough here. They definitely seem better days, so even though these are not like a super fancy set of coilovers, they should definitely ride a lot better than this ones did. Uh, we try to adjust it here about the same height. Again, Brian does not plan to go any lower than what he was. So we have him adjusted. This has a lot of, I mean, I'm talking about a lot of space here. So if you wanted to be like super slam and be a hot boy about it, you could just roll this up. And I mean, I'm talking about you'll be on the floor. Yeah. So. Um, definitely not bad when it comes to adjustment height wise it does have some dampening it looks like on top here so we got soft and a little harder um, this is already preset from the factory so we're not touching this part at all we're just trying to figure out how many adjustments do we have here on the top so that way we can once we put them on we can adjust this if we need to but we're looking good here we did tighten up this a little bit just to get it to not move 
and then once we put it in the car that's when we're going to finalize adjusting this one uh, this collar with the wrenches that we got included uh, outside of that the coilovers look pretty good so far so let's get this one installed here and then we'll move to the driver's side to get this one out and install the new one as well The shocks actually have 32-way dampening for uh, soft and hard settings here. And we drove one right to the middle, so we're at 16. Uh, if Brian drives around and it feels good, then he's gonna leave it like that. If it feels a little too hard or too soft, then he'll come in here and click them to either way. And now we are ready to go and do the driver's side here. So we're gonna get that side knocked out and then we're gonna move on to the front. Let's do it. All right, everyone, so here we are on the driver's side. Same thing, we got the new uh, coilover in place everything lined up as close as we could to the old one so we shouldn't get we should be about the same right height so if we move over now to the driver's side and the front uh, we're going to have to remove two bolts if you can see here we have basically a 19 millimeter it's going to be this one and this bottom one right here so 19 millimeter bolts and then on the top we have 12 millimeter bolts. As you can see, Brian is missing two of the bolts. So he's been riding real dangerous here with the, with the driver's side. Life's a risk, bro. He says life's a risk. But uh, yeah, we're gonna put the new one in here, which is gonna have all three of them. So it should be good to go. And then uh, also when you're doing this, careful with your brake lines, you have to remove those out of the way. We have a brake line and then like a sensor or something, I think here. So get those two out of the way before you remove the shock and then we should be good to go so and just real quick here we have the new one and something that i found interesting is that the d2 shocks they don't have tabs for those brake lines and sensor lines they just they're basically right now uh zip tied into it which i think is very odd for something that uh, i mean i know the d2 name i've seen it before at least more than this one and this one comes with all the brackets i mean we have the one for the brake line here we have the other one for the sensor line on this side so uh, very surprising to me that the D2 don't have this kind of features on it and this one does so definitely an improvement over this old shocks and same thing we're gonna do on this side 19 millimeters on the bottom 14 millimeters on the top and we should be able to get them out we're also going to install this Cusco front end links uh, the ones he had are a little worn now a little old so we got the Cusco ones good brand we are gonna put those in place and those are a 14 millimeter to get the nut out of it so you have to get the top one and the bottom one here and then you should be able to get those out so we're going to get both, the ones, both sides off so we can swap those in, in place as well check it out guys we have the new coilover install again we keep finding kind of confusing torque specs on this so honestly do your best and find the one that you think is right uh, I think on the top one here, it said it was 129. 129 or 137. So. 129 or 137. We hit it with some Uga Dugas, but it ain't going anywhere. So that one is fine. The top one was set to 14 and a half, 14 and a half foot pounds. That one is good. Uh, we are also removing the end links, like he said. Now, one weird thing we noticed here, this one got super messed up. We couldn't get it out of here. But for some reason on the driver's side, it was a 14 millimeter nut. And then on the passenger side, it was a 15 millimeter nut. Um, no idea why, no idea why there were different sizes. Were those the OEM ones? Those were the OEM ones. Those were the OEM ones. So um, we have the new Cusco one here and we are gonna put that one in place right now so we can finish this side. Uh, and then we're gonna move on to the passenger side and do the same thing and get those installed. Uh, this side is looking good. I think we're getting closer to finishing on this side and then that way we can move on to figuring out what's going on with the light. My Japanese is a little rusty, but the only English part that is here, it says uh, this product is only designed in Japan to be used in Japan, not in any other country. I guess uh, the Federales are going to be after me. And now we got the passenger side on. Same deal. We're tying up this one. So, uh, a couple of guys there. 14 pounds on the top. Uh, you do not want to over tighten the top, that thing will bend or break your bolts and you definitely don't want that. Now the Cusco end links here, uh, they're in the uh, sway bar and they were a little tricky to put on. I think Brian had to kind of bend them a little bit to the side. You're going to have to work it in there, but they do go on and they have an Allen wrench on the top here and the bolt so you can hold it and tighten up that bolt. So you'll, you'll need an like open-ended wrench for that. 
Uh, if you don't have one, I'll try to link one in the bottom of the description so you guys can, can get one. If you need one like that, otherwise, yeah, you just gotta tighten that up. Brian's over there tying up the driver's side. And as far as the suspension goes, we are pretty much done. We won't know until we set the car down if we need to adjust the height or anything like that. But so far it's looking good. So we're hoping we got it pretty close to the specs that he had before. And then obviously after this, he'll probably have to go get an alignment just to make sure nothing is out of place. But we are looking good. Now, once we, uh, he finishes up on the bottom there, then we're gonna start moving onto the headlights again to see if we can figure out what the problem is in there. We're really hoping it's a relay and not the actual harness, but we won't know until we start messing with it. So let's get to it. All right, everyone, since the suspension is pretty much all done, we move here to the back to add the little um, brake lights and running lights for the bottom ones. They're gonna replace the reflectors that are in the bumper. And we tested out the connector here for the uh, tail light. And what we found was that the black and white seems to be your running lights. Uh, the brown seems to be the brake lights. The black is our ground. And then this gray um, wire is the turn signal. So we are gonna tap just into the black and white, the brown and the black. And then we should be able to test it and see if this is all good. All right, so we came back to the headlight problem and I started looking more into this fuse box. And there looks like there is a fuse right here, the sturdy, that might control both headlights, but there is also this other one, this one right here. So I believe this uh, 15 one is the left side uh, headlight, and then this other one is the right side headlight. So we took this one out, and sure enough, this one was blown. We replaced it with a new one. We plugged the headlight back in place, and it's working correctly now. So we are pretty much good now to put the headlights back on there, start putting the bumper back, and then we're pretty much gonna be done with this. I mean, we uh, got everything. I mean, sometimes you have to take a break and think outside the box. You know, don't stress yourself too much if it's not working the first time. <laughs> yes, sir, and uh, it definitely wasn't worth it for us to kind of get stuck on that. Uh, we got everything else uh, moved along and everything, so now we are just gonna start putting this back on. We do have to swap those little bottom brackets, the plastic ones, into the new headlights, so we're gonna do that first, and then we're gonna start putting everything in place. All right, we got everything put back together and we are ready to take off the little plastic covers. It's been eight hours that we've been working on this car. Yes, it has been eight hours. Uh, this is probably gonna be very sped up, but it has been eight hours since we started working on this. Between suspension, end links, the back little lights, the, t the headlights, figuring out what was wrong with them and everything has been some time now, so. Here at Flake Garage, we take mandatory breaks, <laughs> so. You work eight hours, you get an hour break. Yep. Lunch on us. Mm -hmm. <laughs> now, you want to do the honors of taking... Shoot. Those headlights look good, man. Especially if you saw what he had before. Uh, this <laughs> is a huge improvement. You got the other one over here. And they are nice and working. You want to just run the lights real quick? Yes. Yeah. So you can see how it, how it looks. We got a pretty nice uh, DRL now. Brian's gonna turn it on here just so you guys can see how they looked. Look at that. There's your low beam. Then we can put high beams. Gonna have the middle one, yep. And then we'll just do a turn signal here. And there's the turn signal as well. So both sides are working good. And just so you guys can see how the back ones work too, uh, looks like we need to push this one a little bit more, but you wanna, right now they're off. So this is how they usually look like. If you want, Brian's gonna go in there and turn them on real quick. That's with the lights on. I know it's a little bright back here, but, and there's a break, yep. So I think this ones are gonna add on to the tail lights, just to the back, a little more visibility. It looks good. So there you have it guys. That was everything we installed today from Brian Subaru. He just left to go get an alignment done. Hopefully he can make it in there in time and get it done. Uh, but everything with the headlights look great. The back little lights look great. Uh, the coilovers, it looks like we left them just a little bit higher than he was before. But he does plan to eventually, hopefully get some wheels. 
And I think once we do, and once we swap the wheels, that's when we're gonna adjust the coilovers again, make them just a little bit lower, uh, just so he doesn't sit so high. Outside of that, I mean, the car is working great so far. The end links are working great. Everything is pretty good. So we're pretty happy with the result. Links to everything we use today are gonna be down in the description. So check it out if you're looking for any of the stuff that we did today. Otherwise, thank you so much for watching and hopefully we'll see you guys on the next video. Bye.